Fact number one, fat is not just sitting there as a glob of fat. Think of fat less like a water balloon and more like a water tower. Water towers obviously store water, but they have a few other functions as well, just like our fat. So the question is, what is the fat on the body doing? If I asked you, what are the two types of fat? What would you say? Well, one, you might say white and brown fat, and you might follow that along with a duh. Then there's both two, folks might say subcutaneous and visceral fat, or both three, you ain't heard any of this. You don't, you don't know what, left, right, brown, purple, pink, what, whatever boat you're in, you can probably agree that most of us don't like a lot of it on our body. I mean, to desperate measure. We run endless cardio, starve ourselves. Sometimes we straight up chop it off. What do all of these efforts have in common? They're futile. Like suck in the guts, guys, with the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters versus Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Buzz Lightyear versus Zerg. What do these two have in common? They knew their enemy. Hey, but you know, enemy is a strong word. I don't know if I really want to say all that. Let's just say fat's a little misunderstood. Am I really that fat? Welcome to No Lab Core Require. I out-research your doctor to learn answers to your questions, whether you're confused or just curious. My name is Johnny, and the fat on our body is some of the most fascinating stuff. I'm gonna share three facts about your fat that you were never taught. Diving deeper into fact number one, fat is not just sitting there. The fat on the body is called adipose tissue. Tissue in the body is composed of cells. For example, muscle is tissue, muscle is composed of muscle cells. If you zoom into adipose tissue, we'll see fat cells or adipocytes. These are the things that are actually holding the fat on our body, like little storage units. So back to the water tower, it's obviously storing water, but it's not just that, it's also storing potential energy. Towers are suspended up from the ground to utilize the pull of gravity to create energy. The taller the tower, the more potential energy. When the water falls, this energy is released and is able to be used immediately, like when you turn on the sink. Our fat cells are also holding stored potential energy. What helps release the energy of fat cells? Adiponectin. Adiponectin is a hormone and it's released by the fat cells itself. And there's two things you're gonna to wanna to know about. It. it makes other tissues more sensitive to glucose and it promotes fat oxid it promotes fat oxidation. Now what the heck is that? When there's glucose in the blood, the hormone insulin is in charge of delivering it to organs and tissues. When insulin is activated too often due to too much glucose in the blood, then organs and tissues stop listening to it. They become less sensitive to it, right? Let's say we're all in a group chat that just sends too many messages. The group chat was a great idea at first, but y'all talk too much. So what do we do? We silence the chat. Our tissues are responding the same way when insulin is sending too many messages. They silence the hormone. This is called insulin resistance. Out of connect is activated via the AMPK pathway, which has this crazy ability to reset your glucose and insulin levels. I talked about how to activate this pathway in this video here. I'll link that in the description. Fat cells aren't just globs sitting there. They produce stuff, they have a nucleus, they have mitochondria, they are fully fledged and functioning cells of the body. Which leads us to fact number two. All fat isn't the same. There are really two main classes of fat, white fat and brown fat. White fat is what we typically think of when we think of fat on the body. There are the storage units. Brown fat is something totally different. Brown fat is found near our clavicular and thoracic region. It keeps us warm without us having to resort to shivering. To produce heat, these brown cells need energy, which is produced by its many, many mitochondria, which are brown, and that gives that fat cell that brownish hue. Hue, hue is just a fancy word for color. It's kind of crazy. White fat cells can grow up to five times bigger than brown fat cells. They, they get heavy. We also have beige adipocytes, which show characteristics of white and brown fat, like little mixed babies. But get this, some white fat cells don't stay white. Nutrition and exercise can actually contribute to the browning of some of those white adipocytes, making them even more useful and promoting better metabolic function. And our stomach fat is not the same as the fat on our arm. Crazy to think about it, but I also made a video on that as well, which will be in the description. The fat on our arm is called subcutaneous fat, and the fat in our middle region is typically mostly visceral fat. Both of these fats are in the class of white adipose tissue. That visceral fat around the organs and that central region, that ain't no joke. Fact number three, we've believed that the fat cell count, the amount of fat cells in our body was actually set in stone in adolescence and that it would just be carried on into adulthood. Like we would just have a certain amount of fat cells. They would either just get smaller or bigger, but we've since learned. That's 
Oh. Fat cells can grow larger. We call that fat cell hypertrophy, but they can also grow in size. We call that hyperplasia. We also used to believe, and we've retired this idea, that once a fat cell is made, it stays. Not the case. Fat cells do indeed die and they have a turnover rate or they are replaced every 8.3 years. The turnover rate is actually faster in obese individuals as fat cell death is heavily associated with fat cell size. Just like a water balloon size is associated with its death. It can literally expand to the point of exploding, right? Didn't you just say think of a water tower and not a water balloon? Didn't I tell you what I told you about interrupting my videos? Oh, you hostile. What's up? Oh, I'll What's show you. Up? I know you're wondering. What happens when a fat cell dies? Does all the fat inside of it just fall out? Now we are sophisticated, highly intricate, complex beings. Why would we think for one second that the fat would just fall out? It does. It does, it just falls out. Yep, it literally just falls out. When the fat cell dies, it leaks some stuff out and that signals macrophages, which are immune cells that basically eat up cellular garbage. Think of them like Pac-Man. As for the fat that was released when the fat cell died, it goes into the blood, AKA the streets, jumped off the porch. And the streets are ruthless. This fat could be retaken up and adopted by a nice fat cell family around the corner, or it could be recruited into a gang and doing the dirty work for mitochondria. Thug life. Stay in school.